Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of these two wallets right here. These are both from Silent Pocket, which is a brand I hadn't heard of before, but, uh, well, here we go. Um, and both of these are just wallets, like you keep in your pocket and you keep cash and whatnot in. Um, first off, I want to thank Silent Pocket, the company, for sending these little guys along. Um, they, uh, reached out to me, said, hey, Nick, you want to review these wallets? I said, sure, but if I do a review, it's going to be a full review with the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly, and I got to be honest with my viewers. It might be a gem, it might be a junk, who knows? Um, but they said fine, no problem, and they sent the wallets to me, and they don't want me to return them, so I'll just be giving them away on the Patreon, most likely, like purchase or something like that. So, anyways, I've tried not to let that affect my review, but there you go, full disclosure. Oh, here we go. Forgot my little. I like this sign with the little emojis. Anyways, keep that in mind. Um, and then there are two wallets right here. The first one is this little guy. This is the Silent Pocket Simple Card Wallet. Now, the thing is, I tried very much to review this, to, to, to carry this and to, to, to use it. But the problem is that when you put more than a couple of cards in this guy, unfortunately, you can no longer actually flex the wallet enough to remove the cards once they're in there. Even after really stuffing it full, trying to break it in, trying to really work on it, it's, it's just not doing. So once you put the cards in here you can't really get them out very easily maybe that's a quality control failure maybe it's a bad design but either way i'm not recommending it and so we're going to put that aside for the rest and we're going to talk instead about this big guy right here this is the uh, silent pocket slim sleek wallet um and it's kind of meant to be a front pocket sort of wallet so um let's go on ahead and talk about the good the great the bad oh size comparison real quick hey that's important this is right here is a standard u.s quarter this is the nick shabazz channel so of course spider codelica you can see it's not a huge wallet here uh this freaking centurion card right here is the uh the, the size of a standard american credit card or probably worldwide actually come to think of it uh right here is a uh, ten dollar bill U.S., so you can see it's a, a little bit longer than the the, the, the the dollar dollar bills here, and um, yeah, I think that ought to do it for size. So anyways, now that we've done that, now we can go into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of the uh, silent pocket RFID blocking slim sleek wallet. Here we go. Okay, so on the good side, first off, this is actual leather. I mean, it's they're, they're calling it Napa leather, and sure, I mean, I don't know what valley it's from, but by God, I'm sure it's it's Napa in some way or another. Um, but it, it's fine. It's good leather. It's reasonably soft. It feels good in the hand. It's not like, you know, the, the, the fakey leather, chintzy stuff that you'll often see on really cheapy wallets. Um, and so I, I like that. It actually, I it, it's... You know, I'm not a connoisseur of leather goods, but it feels fine, so that's nice. And it is actual leather, sorry about that they're vegans, but so that's the first good thing, is I do like the leather. Second thing is that this guy has plenty of pockets and can comfortably hold 9 to 10 cards. I tend to have a very card-heavy life. I don't tend to carry much cash, just because of the way that I, I live. But it's nice because you can very easily access your cards. So, for instance, I'll keep my main credit card in the front pocket right here, and then behind it I will tend to keep... Uh, my freaking bus pass. So, uh, cause I take the bus to work because I don't want to pay for parking because why bother? Underneath that, um, usually I will keep my, uh, wholesale club sort of membership as well as my, um, the health insurance card. That way if I ever get sick, they can do a wallet biopsy pretty straightforwardly. Uh, right here, I usually keep my driver's license. It's right on top, easy to access. My employee ID, I will keep usually a second credit card and a, uh, ATM card under there. And then this is just a throw that you can, you know... If you have a loyalty program card or something like that, you can do that. So I'm able to fit a pretty big stack of cards right underneath in this big pocket here. And so this is holding a fair number of cards, even by, uh, well, many people's standards. If you've got a Costanza wallet, you're going to have a bad time. And then in the back here, you can put all kinds of cash in there. I don't have all kinds of cash to show you, but... Uh, <laughs> as I do knife reviews, but still, nonetheless. Uh, so it holds a fair number of cards, and that's nice, and it actually does have a slot for cash. A lot of your card-style wallets, like this is my my wallet that I use most of the time here, and this guy doesn't actually have a slot for cash. You just have to put it behind the cards, and so it's nice to actually have that extra slot in there. Um, And like I said, that, so that's good, that you've got plenty of pockets that'll hold plenty of cards, and uh, they're pretty easy to access as well. The price on this guy is not bad. You're looking at 30 bucks, which, you know, I, I think he's not out of line for a wallet, and certainly, you know, for a mass market, you know, not handmade or anything wallet, I think you're doing okay there, uh, and so, yeah, can't argue with that. Um, durability-wise, obviously, I only carried this guy for about a month because, well, 
It's about how long I needed to know uh, before I did that. But the thing is, there's not much wear on it. It's not like it's fallen apart at the seams or anything like that. Um, a good wallet should last you many years. I don't know what this is going to last you, but so far I'm seeing no signs of danger. And then finally, on the good side, this is a wallet that includes RFID blocking. That's the name, Silent Pocket. It makes sure that your pockets are silent on the radio frequency spectrum. So um, it is the case that some modern credit cards have a little chip inside there, a radio frequency identification chip. And uh, what this does is if you bounce specific radio frequencies off of it, it will basically end up transmitting back some information in a way that a reader can read. And the uh, end result of this is that if you've got an RFID card just in your pocket and you walk by a very, very specialized scanning unit, it could actually get information off of that card. And that can include things like your card number, expiration date, and all the cards, even your name, things like that. And so theoretically speaking, in a wallet that is just boring leather, somebody with one of those machines could read the information in your cards without you ever taking this out of your wallet. Uh, or even out of your pants for that matter. This wallet has RFID blocking material in there and it blocks across every radio frequency band etc. And it actually does work to the extent that I, I have a card for that's RFID that opens the doors at work and I kept it in my wallet and I held it up against there and it didn't work whereas it works fine in this guy. So I'm assuming that you know that that's working just fine. And indeed it is the case that nobody stole my credit card information using radio frequency scanning during the time that I used this wallet. So uh, yeah there you go. Then again by that standard this wallet also prevents me from getting hit by medias so take that for what it's worth. But that is a good thing at a fundamental level this does block RFID signals and prevents that very rare attack vector from affecting you. So, to me, that's the good here, is it blocks RFID, it doesn't show a lot of wear, at least after the one month of wear, and sometimes crappy wallets can start falling apart. Price on this guy isn't bad. You get slots for many cards, and many of them are easy to access, so it's easy to grab at your credit card, it's easy to grab at a bunch of other things there. Um, and you get nice, soft leather, which is a beautiful thing to me. Let's talk about what's great here. Look, for me, what's great about this wallet is the fact that it isn't too bulky. I tend to prefer a very minimalist wallet. I do a front pocket carry for my wallet. So this goes in my front pocket, along with uh, the front right usually, along with my uh, often my phone, and usually my knife as well. well a lot of people are going to debate whether that's a good approach, but it works for me. And so I like a small wallet, because it's not the only thing in my pocket at all. And so this guy is my general wallet, and it is very small. And the thing is, even with uh, this guy actually has one more card in it, but still, um, this guy is not terribly bigger, uh, which is really neat. You know, very, very often, uh, just because of the amount of material, the thickness of the leather, whatever, um, uh, wallets tend to be bigger empty than this one is full. Uh, and and that, that tends to drive me a little crazy. But this guy is actually quite good. It's pretty lightweight. It's not terribly big. And I didn't mind carrying and using this wallet at all. So to me, that is what's great, is that there's just not all that much material here. There's not all that much bulk. And as a result, even with cards in it, this isn't bad at all for front pocket carry. So there you go. Um, let's talk about what's bad. So on the bad side, honestly, I just have two nitpicks. Um, the first off is that it is a little bit bigger than it is absolutely necessary to hold the cards because you've got this big wallet, uh, this cash slot here, including a little bit of extra uh, leaf up at the top here. Is that a big deal? No, but compared to a very small card holder, this guy is still a little bit bigger. And that could be a problem for some people, but a lot of people like having the cash slot, so hey, whatever. Um, and then uh, finally, maybe the, 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 the bad thing here is th this right on the inside here, this silent pocket. Um, so, you know, look, I, you've got a logo on the outside there, so it's not like you're going to forget who made the wallet. You can always put a little tag in there someplace with the company name for people to reorder or whatever. But having it on here is not only a little bit tacky, but then it's got this text underneath there, which I honestly cannot read. It could be Croatian, maybe? That's, that's my best guess. Uh, so I, I just, I don't feel like this printing needs to be there, and I think the wallet would be slightly classier without it. But look, if that's the extent of my complaining, they're doing okay. So uh, that's the bad, is that it doesn't need this interior printing, and it's a little bigger than absolutely necessary if you're just holding cards. And honestly, that's why I went back to my current wallet, is because it is just a little bit bigger with the cash holder. But I'm a minimalist, what can I say? Um, let's talk about what's ugly here. 
it's on the ugly side, uh, and this is kind of, I don't know if this is ugly, bad, or just a rant, um, but the main feature of this guy is RFID blocking, but that's meant to prevent something that is vanishingly rare, that is very, very unusual. I mean, RFID scan thefts aren't super common in the wild. There aren't great statistics out there except those provided by RFID companies, which you can't trust anyways. But still, um, I have never had this happen to me or a loved one in the 10 years or so that RFID chips have been common and around. Uh, so unless you are in the NSA and are a regular target of state-level attacks to try and copy your, your, your employee ID or something like that, the thing is, this isn't something you need. The, the, the probability of you losing money due to RFID theft is very, very low, and because of credit card con, uh, protection policies, you probably aren't going to lose money anyways, even if you do have it happen. And the other thing to remember is that your credit cards are exposed anyways. Um, entertainingly, my debit information was recently stolen during the time I was using this wallet, but it was stolen the good old-fashioned way. I went to a sketchy Rite Aid in Toledo, Ohio, and I asked for cash back with my debit card, and bam, two days later, I was buying flowers online in Mexico. Um, no money was lost because they declined the transaction, but still, that wasn't at all this wallet's fault, but the simple fact is the moment you take your card out and hand it over to the freaking cashier, guess what? They have all your information anyways, and so there's a level of trust anyways. And RFID only blo uh, blocks one very rare uh, attack vector, if you will. So, I mean, look, certainly having the RFID thing cannot hurt. Your information is safer inside this wallet than without, particularly if you're using, you know, fake credit cards and whatnot. But anyways, I, I just don't want you to leave this review thinking, oh my god, I need an RFID blocking wallet in order to be safe. Otherwise, terrorists are going to steal my children or some crap. I don't know. Um, the RFID blocking industry, like any good politician, is selling a product using the fear of something that is very rare. I mean, it's possible, 100%, but it's not very common. And I can't say I blame them. That's a good way to goose sales, but don't overestimate the danger here based on marketing messages and keep that in mind as you're making your decisions. So, to me, that is the ugly thing, is that the RFID blocking here is the biggest feature, but it's probably also the least useful feature for most people in their everyday lives. Um, and I guess it's just a rant, let's be real here, but uh, let's talk about the final conclusion. Look, final conclusion, um, this wallet happens to block RFID. That's that's fine, and it certainly doesn't hurt anything. And so if you are the type of person who regularly gets struck by lightning or chased by escaped zoo animals, you know what, it may be worth investing. I mean, clearly luck is not on your side, so go ahead and plan for the crazy scenarios. But what actually matters about this wallet is that it, it is a nice wallet. It's smallish, it's, it's well-made, it's got a nice capacity, and it's easy to access whatever it is you need. I did enjoy carrying this wallet. I did enjoy using this guy. This was a solid choice for me in my everyday life. And if I didn't have a wallet that I like slightly more because it is slightly smaller and thinner, you know what? I would happily keep using this guy in the future. So my final conclusion here is that this is a fine wallet. And so if you're looking for one and this one looks good, pick it up. You, you'll have a nice wallet on your hands and your pockets will be very quiet. You'll be RFID safe and everything like that. But at the other hand, if you love your wallet, already, then keep loving it, because yeah, it might be slightly louder, but chances are no one's listening. So there you go. Um, That's the final conclusion. It's a fine wallet. Happens to block RFID. If you need a wallet, check it out. I'll throw a link in the description um, to the, the, the thing, but uh, otherwise, hope this has been interesting to you, that you uh, cashed in on the information here, get it? Uh, and that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful and um, scan-free rest of your day. Bye now.